Hey guys, I'm going to talk puppies tonight. Um, I have a structured plan for you to get off on the right paw with your pup. i um, getting a lot of questions. Everybody's getting their summer puppies. Um, and I could go on and on. There are so many things to talk about for puppies and the success of raising a puppy. But what I really want to talk about tonight is the structure of your day with your puppy and what it should look like. So get your notebooks out, get your pens ready. Um, you're going to obviously tweak this according to your schedule, but the closer you stay to this schedule, it's really going to help you guys get off on the right foot. All right, so here's my list. Um, and it's backwards, so it doesn't matter. You're gonna just take notes and I'm gonna tell you. First thing you're gonna do is you gotta have a crate, all right? So you wanna have a, your puppy crated and in the morning you're gonna come down, you're gonna get your puppy out of the crate. And it's fine if the crate is in your room. I do like the puppy to be in their own space, uh, independent of the us. I don't like for puppies to become attached um, early on because we just are, always working at preventing separation anxiety as far as I'm concerned so I like to keep them in a separate space away from me at nighttime um, and then you're gonna pull them out of the crate and the first thing we're gonna do obviously is potty so when we do the potty training it's out the front door or the the closest door um, and to the closest spot in the yard you give the command go potty or whatever command you want to do when the puppy goes you're gonna tell them good job, and you're gonna you can give them some kibble if you want to mark and reward it. That's great. So when I say mark, I mean you're gonna say good job, and then you can give a couple kibble. Okay, just to reinforce, good job for going to the bathroom. Okay, because that way next time he'll remember. Hey, we're going out this door. She tells me to go potty. I go. I get treats. Okay, or kibble. Um, after your pup has pottied, bring him in. I like to measure out my daily kibble. So whatever I'm gonna feed my puppy for the day, measure it out in a bowl. And then during feeding times, I'm gonna use that kibble, some of it each time that I feed the puppy, and I'm gonna train just basic commands. Sit, down, stand, teach some focus drills, teach your puppy to look at you. I have some basic videos I'm gonna post right on my Facebook page. Um, and there are some drills you can do on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to post uh, some other things as well going forward, so just keep checking back to see um, there will be different things that you can do with your puppy um, to make the, the whole feeding experience um, more of an interactive learning experience for your pup. because. We don't want to just give our puppies a bowl of food. We want them to work for it, okay? I don't go to work and then just, you know, my boss just gives me like my paycheck. I have to work for it, right? So same for you. If, if you don't uh, do the work, you're not going to get paid. Same goes for your puppy. So feeding time is training time. It also makes you more valuable in the eyes of your pup because it's like, hey, this person is, they are my access to food. So I want to pay attention to them. They are important. So they, you know, revere you. They hold you on a, a pedestal and that's what we want. So once the feeding slash training is over, take your puppy out for the morning walk, okay? Get your morning walk in. It doesn't have to be horribly long. It doesn't have to be 30, 40 minutes. Um, we don't want to, you know, train our pup like that. And, and besides that, they don't even need that much exercise. So you can go um, 15 minutes if you want. Bring your puppy back, and then you can either crate them up for the day if you have to go to work, or if you're home for the day, you can then put your puppy in an X pen or a gated um, area in your house that you can supervise. You want to make sure you're supervising your puppy at all times. Never leave your puppy unattended. Never leave your puppy have free reign of the house. Um, so make sure, that's why I say get an X pen. It's like a, an exercise play pen uh, for dogs. Um, you want to get it appropriate to the dog's size so they can grow into it. Um, if you have questions on that, you're not sure what to get or where to get it, just um, send me a message and I'll get back to you. I'll tell you what you need to get. Um, when your puppy is in their X pen, you want to use some toys, put some toys in there. Um, if it's a feeding time, you can get a Kong and stuff it with their kibble and then just cap it off with some wet food, just like a tablespoon, cap it off, smear it over and freeze it. Get a bunch of these going in the freezer. So you just pop them out uh, and then you give them to your pup and it takes them a while to get through the frozen food. So it's fun. They have to work for it. Um, and it tires them out. So that's nice. You can either put that in their crate or their X-Pen if it's feeding time. 
Um, or you can get one of these toys that's like, you load it up with kibble here, here, and this is a little chewed up, but here. And that's fun. They have to, you know, kind of work, work the food out of it. So that's nice and interactive for the puppy. Interactive in the sense that they are getting their own food. Like you don't have to actually be there with them, you know, playing. They are learning to play on their own and get some food out of it, right? And you can also get them a Nyla bone. Uh, puppy size, of course. This is not a puppy size, but this brand I love because they're indestructible. They have like peanut butter flavor and bacon flavor, um, and they're just a lot. Of, dogs love them, so grab a couple of those and interchange them. Stick one of those in in the X Pen um, or in the designated area that's gated, and let your puppy entertain themselves. Now, quick thing about that. When your puppy starts to get antsy or they lose interest in their toys and they start to maybe like gnaw on the woodwork or um, dig at the carpet or whatever, you want to take, it's time, it's time to go in the crate. So they've had too much freedom, too much stimuli. So take them and go potty again and then you're going to crate them up for a while. Let them, let them get some rest um, and don't feel guilty about having your puppy in a crate because puppies sleep for 19 hours a day so it is not too much to ask of them to sleep in the crate for you know a few hours while you get some work done or if you have to go to the market or whatever now if you're out to work and you've got a really young puppy like 10 weeks old 12 weeks old you're gonna need to have someone either a family member or a neighbor uh, or hire a pet service to come in and just let your puppy out to go potty and stretch its legs Get a little 15 minute break, half hour break is even better. Um, but you need to split up the day if you're gonna be out of the house for more than four hours for puppies, okay? Um, and then once you're in the afternoon or evening, you're gonna pretty much repeat the whole thing. You're gonna get your puppy out of the crate, go potty out the same door to the same spot, do the same routine, and then you can um, do some interactive play outside um, or you can go for another walk, but I love play outside because you can start to teach your dog to fetch either a frisbee or a ball. Um, you know, some dogs love to do tug. So if you train them at a young age, you want to get a tug that's appropriate for a puppy, get a puppy size. I mean, pups love tug. Um, and don't ever listen to someone who says that you can't teach a puppy to play tug. You can and it's a really great exercise. It's a great outlet. It's also a very bonding experience between you and your pup to, to play any kind of game. But tug especially, it's like very physical. It's the back and the forth. It's like a dance and it's a lot of fun if you're into that sort of thing. Um, and if you've got a dog who, who uh, uh, likes to do that or if you discover they like to do that, then go for it. Don't, don't be afraid to, uh, to play tug. Um, even though some people, some things that you read tell you not to do that with a puppy, you most certainly can, um, and I highly recommend it. And on the, the, along the lines of play, I want to encourage you to find the activities that your puppy loves to do the most. Some puppies absolutely love fetching a ball, others love um, frisbees. I want you to experiment. If you get two or three toys and your puppy's like, eh, I'm not interested, I want you to try something else. They love jolly balls. A lot of puppies like jolly balls. You can look on Amazon for the different types of, of jolly balls. Some of them have handles, some have ropes, some don't have anything at all. Um, experiment and find out what your dog loves and then do it with them regularly. It's a great outlet. It's great to get exercise that way and interact and you can work in your commands. Uh, just make your dog uh, sit while you toss the ball and then give them the, re the release command and they go get the ball, they bring it back and you can start to teach your puppy the out command where they drop the toy for you and then you repeat this, right? So it's a lot of fun um, and those are the things that I recommend for you. Build those into every day with your puppy and you'll see that um, you'll feel a lot better about yourself. You won't feel so guilty. And also you're gonna notice that your puppy's behavior is a lot more healthy because you have it on a structure and there are times for it to rest. You're working that in, you're building that in their day. And there are also times to be you know, playful and to have fun and to get your exercise. Um, that's great for the puppy. Uh, so try these things out. If you have questions, please reach out to me and I am always here to help. I hope this was helpful for you and uh, thanks for tuning in.